Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk a little bit more about source or SNAT and destination or DNAT. There were some questions in the videos uh, and somebody went back actually through some other older videos and was asking some questions. So I want to talk about this for just a minute. So at the root of source SNAT, SNAT, and DNAT or destination NAT, what's really happening? Well, source NAT changes the source of the outbound IP or port. And we'll get into that here in just a second. And destination uh, NAT, DNAT, changes the destination of the inbound IP or port. Now, you can get, this can get a little confusing, especially when you do things like hairpin NAT or NAT reflection, whatever you want to call that. Basically where ports, uh, traffic from inside your network hit the WAN, face, uh, WAN interface and then turn around and come right back in. Hairpin NAT, NAT reflection, those uh, are the two most popular terms that I have heard for that. Um, so what do we mean by SNAT changes the source of outbound, outbound IP addresses or ports? So we know that these addresses down here, the 192.168.1.5, the 192.168.3.0 slash 24, which is an entire network, 254 usable IPs, and the single IP 10.10.10.5, we know that these are inside the network only, and once they hit this WAN interface, they have to be NATted because they can't be routed over the public internet. Only our IP addresses from our provider can be routed over the public internet. So let's say that you're in this, uh, and we're going to do this kind of together here. I didn't really have a good plan for this. That's why we're in paint. But what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to pick on, first of all, this 192.168.3 network, this entire network. Now let's say that... Um, Let's say that you have a, um, uh, a banking application, right? Where you're going to send data to your bank. Well, let's say that the, that the computer or the server is in the 192.168.3.0. Or let's say you've got a bunch of machines that are sending. And the bank or let's just make something up, right? Like maybe you're sending video somewhere or whatever. You're, this 192.168.3.0, every machine in this network needs to appear to the public internet as though it is 12.100.0.2. So what you're going to do in your firewall is you're going to set up a, uh, an SNAT rule because this is outbound. And you're going to tell the firewall that anything sent from 192.168.3.0 slash 24 needs to be natted to 12.100.0.2. So that is source nat. We can also change the ports. You know, we can play with the ports and, and things like that. You don't have to do that with an entire network. You can have a one-off. So this 192.168.1.5 could be source natted to 12.100.0.1. Now you can take it, uh, well, let's, we'll come back to that. So DNAT will we change the inbound. So let's say that we're hosting a web server on 10.10.10.5 and we're doing port 443, which is TLS, SSL. It's secure, right? Whatever you want to call it. What you have to do is you have to tell the firewall and see a lot of firewalls have port forwarding. And so port forwarding is actually doing all of this configuration for you automatically. And like if you have an edge router um, and you enable port forwarding, um, if you go into the config, it doesn't even show the DNAT. It like it like obsc it's obscured like the router's doing it, but it's the rules aren't there the same way as if you went and actually added a DNAT rule. But what we would do is we would set the, uh, so, so all web browsers, 
know that port 443 is for HTTPS by default, right? So we would set an FQDN, uh, you know, to, to hit 12.100.0.3. Then what we're telling the firewall to do is forward port 443, and that's where DNAT and SNAT's really cool because we can do it port level only. We don't have to expose everything. We're going to get to that in just a second. But what we do is we tell the firewall anything that comes into your WAN interface that is destined for this 12.100.0.3 port 443, ferry it through the firewall down to 10.10.10.5 port 443. Okay? So we're matching it. Now, when you start doing source ports, things can get crazy because I've seen people that accidentally use source ports instead of de destination ports. And when a computer is sending, the uh, source port can be totally random. Uh, when you're requesting 443 for HTTPS on a server, your source port is probably not going to be 443. It's going to be something else. So you got to be careful when you start... Um, specifying source ports right but destination ports for services are going to be fixed unless you're doing port knocking and some other things that we're not going to cover in this so that is dnat now if we have a combination of snat and dnat we can call that one to one and i did not put that in the uh in the title of the video i have a one to one video you can find but if we tell the firewall to go ahead and forward all ports, not just 443, anything that's destined to 12.100.0.1, let's do this in yellow, anything that is destined for 12.100.0.1, no matter the port, ferry it through the firewall, down, to 192.168.1.5. And then we also tell the firewall anything from 192.168.1.5, when it hits the WAN interface, always translate it to 12.100.0.1. And we have now created a one to one mapping. Now, you may have to do some other configuration based on who your firewall vendor is. Like you may actually have to go into the firewall itself and allow all those ports. Doing it on the NAT table may not be enough because they're processed differently. So that would be a one-to-one -one setup. I hope that that clears this up a little bit. Let me know down in the comments if I cleared it up. Let me know if I confused you even more. And the other thing is, real quick, what we'll take a look at is we will take a look at, we'll take a look at our Grandstream router and we'll take a look at what this looks like. Hold on just a second. All right, so I'm in my GCC 6010 and I'm under firewall policy and advanced NAT. And you can see I've got SNAT and DNAT. So I can add a source NAT. Now I would have to have multiple WAN uh, addresses and because if I don't, I'm just masquerading everything to my single WAN IP. But you can see, you know, do I want to do certain protocols? Um, all UDP, TCP, so that would be basically all. Or UDP or TCP. There's some other protocols like ICMP and things like that. It's not specifically listed here. Um, and then the source IP address, this would be the inside. And then the uh, here's where you get into your... Um, your your ports, and you don't you don't necessarily have to uh, mess with the ports. That's why there's not an asterisk there. But then what you would do is you would specify your destination IP address on your on your WAN interface. And then if we go to DNAT and we go to add a rule, remember this is inbound traffic. You can see it's kind of the same thing. We get down here to rewriting our destination port because we might want to do that. Sometimes you want 443 to go to something else internally. We'll get into that. Let me know if I just confused you on that down in the comments. But then look at this. We've got the NAT reflection down here. 
and that's where you're going to be able to hit that firewall and come right back. So if you're not running an internal uh, DNS server, this is where your internal clients can use an external DNS server, get the WAN IP of your service, and then come back right through. Uh, by default, a lot of fire firewalls don't allow that. Some of them you have to have more configuration. If you're using port forwarding, which I think if I go over to the router here, let's see, external access, port forwarding. So if I add a, a port forward here, then there's somewhere else. And Well, you know what? I, I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't know if this does hairpin NAT or NAT reflection by itself. Definitely the uh, firewall on the DNAT side, we have to turn it on. Um, and if you do it, if you don't turn this on, then you would have to go in and write the firewall rules that allow you to do it. So that's one of the things that a lot of people get confused about, like on an edge router, is if you use port forwarding, and there's that magic little box uh, that enables hairpin NAT. So it creates all those rules for you, just like this NAT reflection toggle switch would do that for you. Now, if you only have one WAN IP address, that's fantastic. But if you have multiple WAN IP addresses and you want to do it, then you have to get in on the edge router, at least to writing rules here in the grand stream, you can just hit NAT reflection. And it's automatically going to turn it on for you as long as you have your IP addresses configured correctly. So let me know if you've got any questions about it down in the comments. I, I hope this cleared up source NAT destination NAT. The combination of those equals one-to-one -one NAT. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know for sure down in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. If you need your firewall rules reviewed or a, a security checkup or you're having voice over IP problems or storage issues or whatever, fill out the contact form on willyhow.com. Someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Head on over to community.willyhow.com. Sign up, share your knowledge, ask questions, just be part of the community. It's free, right? How many things are free? So, um, once again, if you have any questions about this, let me know down in the comments. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.